Have you ever learned something for school, or for work, or simply for the fun of it? One method for memorizing facts is to repeat it over and over again, hoping to engrave the information into the brain. That is called learning by rote. It is not the most fun way to learn. It is also not the most efficient. German science journalist Sebastian Leitner came up with another method in the 70s called the Leitner system, which uses flashcards and spaced repetition. A lot of current learning apps are based off this system. It works this way. You learn a concept one day, then you look at it again quite soon to remind yourself about it. Then you wait a little bit longer and look at it again to see if you still remember. Then you wait a long while. Then you look at it again a very long time later. If you can still remember it then, it is likely embedded in your long-term memory, and you are much less likely to forget it later on. More recently, Gabriel Weiner, a singer and polylinguist, created his own memorization technique based off of Leitner's method, so as to be able to attain fluency rapidly in multiple languages. We are going to build a Leitner box following Gabriel Weiner's technique. There are three things you need to understand before you can use Leitner's spaced repetition method. How to build a Leitner box, how to create a card, and how to use the two together to create long-term memories. How to create a Leitner box. First, you will need these materials. One box, like a shoe box. One set of flashcards. One writing utensil one calendar, one Leitner chart, seven dividers. Note, you can create dividers by taking one of the cards, cutting it into seven pieces, folding them in half, then attaching each one to another card with glue, tape, or staples. Optional, weighted object, colors, magazines with scissors and glue, computer with internet connection. Step 1. Label the dividers with the numbers 1 through 7. Step 2. Place the dividers into the box in numerical order with 1 first, then 2, all the way to 7. To stop them from falling over, you may need to place a weighted object behind them. Possible card ends include using your extra cards in a stack, a paperweight, or a small picture frame. As the box fills over time with cards, this will become less of a problem. Step 3. Mark your calendar. The schedule we are following is not based off of Leitner's schedule. Instead, we'll be using Gabriel Weiner's technique, which follows a 64-day cycle. For that reason, it is best to use a calendar that covers at least 64 days to start. Numbering your calendar works like this. Pretend today is May 6th. Mark today with a 1. That makes today day 1. Then mark May 7 with 2, and May 8 with 3, and so on. Continue like this until you have filled out all 64 days. At that point, the numbers will start over with 1. You will also need a Leitner chart. This will tell you what you will study on days 1 through 64. I have provided you with a copy of the chart created by Gabriel Weiner. Now that your box is ready, it is time to create some cards to go into the box. There are no rules for what goes on your cards, but there are a few suggestions. Number one, keep it simple. Never try to memorize more than one single item per card. If necessary, break up a complex phrase into smaller parts. For example, let's say you want to memorize when George Washington was born. You could write, when was George Washington born, on one side of a card. Then write, George Washington was born February 22, 1732, on the other. However, that is quite a long stream of numbers to remember. Instead, you could divide them into four different cards. George Washington was born blank. 
1732. George Washington was born February blank 1732. George Washington was born February 22nd blank blank was born February 22nd 1732. Number two. Look at the information from multiple viewpoints. You may have noticed the last card for George Washington did not have you remember his birthday. It had you remember whose birthday was on February 22nd, 1732. It is a good idea to always have at least two cards for every piece of information you want to learn. For instance, say you want to remember that the collective noun for a group of cats is a clouder. One card might say, what is the collective noun for a small group of cats? With the other side being a clouder. A second card might say, what group is the word clouder a collective noun for? With the answer being cats. Number three, build a memory. Let's pretend you are studying French. You wish to remember the French word éclair. You could take a flashcard, write éclair on one side and lightning on the other. Then you could take a second card and write lightning on one side and éclair on the other. That is a reasonable method. It is keeping it simple and looking at it from multiple ways. However, while you want the information you are memorizing to be simple, you want your memory of that information to be as complex as possible. Gabriel Weiner has quite a lot to say on creating cards for language acquisition, including not translating vocabulary directly into English. Otherwise, you are memorizing how to translate, not how to speak the language. He recommends using pictures instead. This has the added benefit of giving your information more of a story. You will need to draw or find a picture for your cards. The more elaborate your research into the information, the better. For instance, perhaps you would be interested to know that the French pastry, called an éclair, is so named because of how the filling is quickly squirted inside, like lightning. So the French named the pastry lightning. Or because it is eaten in a flash. Or because the confectioner's glaze makes it glisten. The first is the story I was told, but I found several contradictory reports, so it would seem the true reason is unknown. Still, now do you not feel like you have a much stronger memory around the word éclair? The trick is to remind yourself of all these things when you look at your card. So you could write éclair on one side of the card, then draw a picture of lightning on the other side, then add a picture of the pastry éclair with the note. Why? Is it an éclair? To remind you of the story you learned. Then, of course, you will want to do the reverse. Have the pictures on one side and the word on the other. Gabriel Weiner suggests a third card to prompt spelling. You can do this by putting phonetic clues and pictures together and asking, how do you spell this? It is up to you if you wish to go that far. Number four, build stories around hard to remember information. There are certain facts that simply need to be memorized. Perhaps it is difficult to remember the word éclair has an acute accent on the first E, or George Washington's birthday. It is hard to build a memory around a number or a bit of grammar. Say you need to remember this fact. The area of a triangle equals height times base length divided by two. You can draw pictures, so that is where to start. But really, after that, it is straight up memorization. The trick then is to create your own story. Whatever concepts you are trying to remember, whether numbers or accents or years, you can learn to associate those concepts with something you can picture. For instance, I came up with a way to remember dates that gives every year a unique picture. It goes like this. For every date in the 1700s, the picture takes place on the moon. That is a very distinct place that I can picture in my head. Every century is a different place. Every tin is a different action. For thirties, I imagine spinning violently. Then, every single digit is a distinct object. 
For two, I imagine a vehicle, like a bicycle. If I want to remember that George Washington was born in 1732, I picture baby Washington on the moon riding in a carriage that is spinning violently like a top. To really help the memory stick, it is ideal to draw this image on the back of the card. You can also copy an image off your computer, or you can cut it out of a magazine. That way, you will be reminded of your story every time you check your answer. How do I remember what numbers go with what story? Two ways. Firstly, I write them down so I can refer to it later. Secondly, I make cards and use my Leitner box to help me memorize them, just like everything else. How to use a Leitner box and cards to create long-term memories. Now you have your cards and you have your box. How do you use them? They saw your new cards in the box in front of divider 1. This is your learning pile. I advise mixing them up at first. The more random the order, the better. Next, decide how many cards a day you want to learn. Remember, whatever number you pick will be the lowest number you will be studying each day. If you start by memorizing 100 every day, there will come a day when you may have over a thousand cards to review. I advise something between 10 and 50, but the amount you feel you can handle is up to you. Remember, a lot of the cards will be over the same concepts, just in different ways, so it is not as daunting as it sounds to have a lot to go through. Start by looking at your calendar. Since today is your first day, it should be marked with 1. Next, look at your Leitner chart and find the corresponding number. For day 1, it says level 2, 1. This means you should review all the cards behind divider 2, then all the cards behind divider 1. Only, there will not be any cards behind the dividers this first day. On day 1, you will only have the learner cards, the cards you placed in front of divider 1. Pull out the number you decided on to create your study deck. Then look at each card and its flip side once. This is your learning time. Take your time to build your stories in your head. Remind yourself of the memories you made while making the cards. Then go through the cards a second time. This time, every time you remember the correct response, place that card behind divider 1. Every time you do not remember, place the card at the back of your deck. Keep going through the deck until every single card has been placed behind divider 1. You are done for the day. On day 2, you will again look at the calendar. It should say it is day 2. For day 2, the Leitner chart says level 3, 1. There is still nothing behind divider 3. Look behind divider 1. There should be all the cards you studied the day before. Remove the deck and review each card. Every card where you can correctly remember the answer on the back before looking, place the card behind divider 2. Every card that you did not remember, set aside. When you have gone through all the deck, pick up the cards you set aside. Go through them again. Whenever you remember the answer, put the card behind divider 1. Do this until you have finished all the cards. You have finished the review for the day. Now it is time to continue learning. Take the number of cards you wish to learn from your learning deck and do as you did on day one. Continue doing this method every day. Every time you review a card and remember it successfully, it goes up one level. However, if you forget it, return it all the way back to level one. Finally, the day will come when you will see level 7. On that day, every card you look at and remember graduates out of the box and will be considered a long-term memory. And now you know how to build a Leitner box. Make your flashcards and study. Next step, start forming long-term memories.